Hey traders, this is T Bradley 90 from the My Investing Club chat. I'm one of the top mentors and moderators in chat. As a special gift to our viewers on YouTube, we have created a free two hour course to help teach you how to start a consistently profitable trading business and identify high paying setups in just 30 days. There will be limited seating every week, so register for the course and reserve your spot now using the link in the description. As a special bonus for everyone that watches the entire video, we will give you the link to a free 10 hour additional mini course that has never been released to the public. Register now before all slots completely fill up. All right, so we're gonna be talking about execution today. A lot about execution. Because I get, probably my most commonly question asking is like, quest, commonly question ask, asking, commonly asked question is like, you know, how do you fill, like how do you top pick, how do you bottom tick, like how did you get out so fast, right? Well, so we're gonna go over a, a lot of that stuff and hopefully it answers some questions there. Oh, PF, PFNX, that's right. That was a low hanger. Okay, so, so what we're gonna do is, uh, today we're gonna talk about key traders, market sentiment, um, trader topic and fallacies, talk about execution improvement, and then we're gonna end with Q&A. And for those who, this is their first time, or one of the first few times, um, what you can do is you can ask a question at any given time in the webinar, and most of the Q&A will get um, dealt with at the end. Um, but, you know, if it's pertaining to what's on the slide, I try to look to the left and get to it right away. But if not, we'll definitely get to all questions at the end. So just, you know, whenever you feel like it. I mean, you, I don't care what you guys post in the chat. Like, you guys can have fun with the chat. Um, it, it's, it's normally good for roasting and stuff. I don't typically look at it because I'm just too focused on the, on the slide. But, yeah, have fun with it. Ask questions, whatever. And let's go. Hold on, Echo, turn off my AC. Okay, that's much quieter. All right. So uh, this is a, I, I almost like, there, I have a lot of trades like this in the middle of the day, um, or on not like a lot, th in the middle of the week, I'll have trades like this. And this is just an example of a, of a super like, like th there's not much to learn about this trade except for the fact just to kind of prove that, you know, like it's okay to get out of stocks that aren't working like in the time frame that you expect. And that can literally mean if you think it's going to tank right now and there's a good solid risk reward for it to tank right now and you don't, and it doesn't happen. It's totally like, you don't have to feel ashamed for getting out. Right. Cause I think that's a lot of people, a lot of traders, especially new traders pro Oh, Good idea. I think I did hit record. Thanks. A lot of new traders problem is, and it stems from just not knowing and, and not knowing what to know. Like everyone here is like all these different things about like what they're supposed to do. And like maybe scalping's bad, or maybe, you know, you shouldn't be so wit saw you with your stops. Right. And there's some truth in both sides of that kind of, uh, you know, both of those statements, but, and anyway, um, another trade I took this week, um, yeah, was ASUR, and um, this is uh, kind of an. So I got people, I, Phil actually nailed this on the head because he's like, "Hey, this is a this is what we talked about on the phone. This is a range hold channel, Scott. This isn't part of this isn't part of your niche, right? Are you expanding and right? And so kind of, I'm definitely normally more of a. I like to trade um, when when stocks break the range, like breakouts, breakdowns. Those are my favorites. Um, but yeah, this is essentially a range hold channel, uh, channel scalp. And I did a, a live video trade of this. So if you're an annual or lifetime member, you can, you can see the live trade, but I, I don't, I, I still think it's, you know, I can still go over it for, for everybody else. It just, it won't be live, but the idea of this trade was basically, um, that the stock had been holding a nice range. It, the stock had set a morning range in the morning. Right. And, and so it basically, like Bao said, it gave me the lines to play off of. Right. So I was kind of trying to play Bao here, but playing Bao in my own way. Like you can't try to emulate someone exactly and trade just like them because you're not them. But so basically I got in and, and I tried to do it like Bao probably would have been adding all the way up into here. Right. And that's more Bao style. I like to, I normally like to put on a position, like a half size position or a third size position. 
and then add once I feel more comfortable. Like once I feel like there's a, once I feel like there's a better level for me to risk, then I like, oh crap. Uh, yeah, so that was that trade. Uh, ONCS was today, I, uh, I traded this one today. And this was essentially a morning washout long and I wanna go over the difference, right? Uh, the difference between this and an SSR washout is an SSR washout, there's no way in, in hell I would have held this long, right? There's no way in hell I would have held this long on an SSR stock. Because for those of you who have, you know, like paid attention to my SSR washout, like recaps and, and commentary just throughout the chat room, um, the SSR trade is a trade that has to work for me pretty immediately or I'm going to be getting out. Kind of like the Roku trade, right? Like if this, this didn't work immediately for me and I was totally out, right? And so I, I don't have a fear of, I don't have that fear. I don't have that fear of, you know, like, oh no, maybe it's gonna trick me, right? Like that's, that's I think a big detriment for new traders is everybody's afraid to be tricked. I don't wanna be tricked, I don't wanna be tricked, I don't wanna be tricked because then if you're tricked, you're somehow a noob, right? Like, I mean, just let yourself be tricked. I mean, like the, the point is, is like you have an idea for the trade and there's a time, there's a timing attached to that idea, right? So if this was an SSR washout, like I would have been buying in here and if it would have stalled, I like, I would have stopped out probably right here at the bottom. Like I would have stopped out right there. Like I would have been in. Um, but, all right. So gosh, dude, this market sentiment just sucks. Like, man, like I posted about this a couple of days ago. I posted about this a couple of days ago. Oh shit. I didn't even go through the exit of this tr trade basically. And like, I, sorry. I just, I basically just like, because of the float size on this, um, the, the fact that it kept holding strengthened my thesis, right? Because like it had every chance to break down and it just didn't, two was holding so solid. And that just kind of, you know, like people were fighting to cover it too. That kind of strengthened my thesis. The longer $2 held, the more comfortable I was. And the, you know, the, this was like a 10 million share float, I think. And 10 million share floats are not micro floats, right? Like a one to 2 million share float. And I probably would have had orders in 250 and 60 and totally thought this could have been an RKDA right? 10 million shares is a lot harder, right? Like uh, we can double the float rotation on a one or 2 million share stock in the first 15, 30 minutes of a day, right? We can double the float rotation of a stock, but like normally it takes about an hour to get 10 million shares, right? And so like the float rotation aspect is a lot less on a 10 million share float than a 2 million share float, five times less to be exact. And like, so that's why I was kind of just looking to get, get out at resistance, right? Just get out at the next line because I didn't like, if this would have went up, I wouldn't have cared because like, I mean, I have to trade it for the float that I see, right? Like, you know, I look at the spread, I look at the level two and I look, I try to gauge it how easy and thick and thick or thin it's trading. And, you know, I, I guess I just got lucky. Like it didn't go any higher, but like it could have went to 240, I think to trap people, but I wanted to get out at the line. Okay. So yeah, this market just, it's pretty lame. You know, there's just not a whole lot happening. And I posted about this in chat the other day about just how, like, I mean, a lot of traders are struggling right now and they're not necessarily losing. It's just that they're having trouble making the same amount of money that they were used to. And so normally what that tends to lead to is losing money, right? Over trading, losing money, um, forcing stuff, that, forcing stuff that isn't there. Right. And so there's a struggle and I'm experiencing it too. You know, this is a very slow time. This has to be one of the, this is probably one of the slower years that I've ever traded just in general, one of the slower years. So I'm hoping like normally after the October fear, right? Like uh, for those of you who know anything about finance, normally there's October shenanigans, like about every, like every year, October is supposed to be like a tank time in the market because of, because of tax evasion and selling before the end of the year. And um, it, it always seems to happen in October. All right, so right now, like it's funny, like we're, we're chugging along. Last week's webinar, we were right here. And I think I'm really hoping we're right here, right? Like we just had the dead week market. So I'm hoping next week we get, we get the pop we're looking for. And the fact that we have those three kind of recoveries is really pushing me over that we're gonna have the buy now, ask questions later market come pretty soon. That would be really cool, especially like, I mean, if Trump could just tweet one more time tomorrow <laughs> that, that trade talk's doing well, maybe that, that might push it over the edge. And just, I mean, I'll go over just in case this is anybody's first time. 
the in small cap land, this is uh, normally the market kind of cycle that we tend to see here. There's the everybody buys everything market, and then everybody, um, and then you know, and then everybody gets you know, short sellers get tired of getting squeezed, so shorts kind of back off of the market. When shorts back off of the market squeezes stop happening and then longs keep you know everything becomes a long crowd then everything becomes a long crowd and we enter the tankers market because everybody's long and just you know nothing can go up when everybody's on the same side and then everybody switches over to being short and then runners stop happening and then once the runners stop happening we enter the dead market and you know everyone gets eventually just so anxious and you know bored of the dead market that everyone's willing to buy anything and anything that has a pr and then we enter this market. So that's the cycle for, for anyone who's not heard it before. Buying the dip versus buying at a clearance price. How do I determine the difference? Like, oh, like, how do I know if I'm not just buying rotten fish on sale? Um, uh, if it's, uh, I normally get, uh, okay, you mean like, okay, so like kind of like a daily dip buy kind of deal, like PCG. Um, yeah, like, these plays, the the big gap down plays, I I only look to scalp. So uh, the only setup that I have on big gap days, big gap down plays like this, is I'm literally doing the exact opposite of what it does at the open. That's all I do on these kind of trades. So like if it if it goes parabolic nuts at the open, I try to short that and cover the pullback. And if it tanks at the open, I'm looking to buy it because I feel like everyone. There, there's so much competing and conflict. Like, some people think it's an amazing dip buy. Some people think everybody's underwater and then it's going to keep going lower, right? So any extreme move to one side is going to be met by the other half, right? And then the other half is going to scare the other half into thinking that the other half is right. And it's, and it's typically going to do this whipsaw like action, right? Like, and so like, it's, yeah, like, and, and, and I, I didn't even know it did this before I scrolled in. Like, you short the pop here, right? And if it tanks, you buy the dip there. Like, that, that's the only setup I know on these big gap down plays is to kind of do the opposite of what it does at the open. Other than that, I, I stay far away from this kind of shit. Like, like it, it's only good for scalps for me. So, in general, like, how do I know if I'm, yeah, yeah, it's, <laughs> um, in general, it's um, uh, like if I'm like maybe not daily big gap downs like this. If it's uh, yeah, long 10:30 a.m. That's all it is, dude, for a large gap. Just just if it downtrended in the morning, it's time to buy. If it downtrended in the morning and it's 10 o'clock and it's an hour later, it's time to buy. Um, oh God, that's not a financial advice. Um, Anyway, um, yeah, but if it's not a huge gap down, how do I know if it's a buy the dip or if, if it's too far? I won't, if it's too red, I'm too afraid, basically, is like if it's too red, I'm too afraid. If it's like, you know, if it goes from eight to seven to six to five, I'm not buying that. Like, you know what I mean? Like if, if it's a huge, big, like fearful move, I'm staying well the way away. All right, so yeah, what are, what are the jokes here? Uh, sell, yeah, oh yeah, scale three dollars short, uh, sell for ten cent win, dude. Yeah, there's some traders that trade that way, and it works in the short term. Oh, Oh, fucking cherry. Or I don't know if you guys know what that means. Cherry. Uh, splendid. <laughs> we call it cherry. Anything that's good is cherry. I don't know if... It... You know what's funny is like... I. So I, was, I grew up here and I'm not even so sure that... Like, I'm sure that I pronounce things with a Hawaiian accent that like... That like... I, I like... I mean, I know, I know very good English, you know, English is my bestest subject, but, um, I'm sure I, I, like I pronounce like the Hawaiian 
version of the accent sometimes. Yeah, like we, uh, yeah, pigeon. But we, yeah, we we have different like uh, pronunciation of vowels. Like, so like I'll just pronounce something like with an ah sound instead of an ah sound. It's never an ah sound. Hey traders, this is Tosh. I go by T Bradley 90 in the My Investing Club chat. Just wanted to reach out and say if you have any questions about MIC, joining MIC, maybe you're a member already, you have three ways to contact myself personally and through MIC. You can hit our social media, you can hit me through PMs in chat, or you can contact us through my email at Tosh at myinvestingclub.com. That's T O S H at myinvestingclub.com. I will get back to you in a timely manner, and I'm saying this because I'm here to help, and I don't want anybody to be afraid to reach out and ask any question that they have. We are here for you guys. All right, see you guys.